afternoon. So, we were talking about uh, Tom Stoppard and his play Dog's Hamlet, Cahoots Macbeth. Now, uh, some of the salient features of these plays, one is of course, the obvious uh, borrowing or the intertextual reference to uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet and Macbeth. And uh, we have also seen how Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, that too um, is a spin on Shakespeare's Hamlet again. So, um, why does uh, uh, Stoppard keep going back to Shakespeare, that is the question. Now, um, why does he do that? To use the play within play structure and if you remember, we were talking about the meta theatre aspect of drama at one point. So, play within play structure uh, is, it, it Stoppard likes to play with that particular device. So, when he uses a well known uh, uh, dramatist like Shakespeare and his works. So, it gives him plenty of freedom to use that particular structure. And um, then of course, uh, uh, um, another uh, uh, reason is that Shakespeare, what is he most famous for? One is universality of his uh, themes and then his language. And playwrights like uh, Tom Stoppard, they want to highlight the uh, unstable nature of language. Therefore, uh, who better than Shakespeare to play around with? Because uh, as we have seen that most of the absurdists, they uh, uh, look at language, something uh, which can uh, be played around with and also, also they try to devalue, de de sorry, devalue the language, because which is a, so, so, uh, such an integral part of uh, uh, the theatre of the absurd as we had seen recently. Dog's ha Hamlet, so what is it about? So, we were talking the other day about uh, uh, Wittgenstein and his philosophical investigations, where he talks about uh, um, the unstable nature of language and how, what uh, if a particular word means something to a one particular community, it can mean something else to another set of people and that is the theme of dog's Hamlet. So, um, we will begin from uh, page uh, 147 and the very first sentence, the introductory line in italics, translation from dog language, do you get that? Into English is given in square brackets where this seems necessary. Now, what is dog's language? Okay, the, is there any language as dog's language? No, okay. But Stop people like Stoppard, they like to highlight the devaluation of language and therefore, this uh, entire play. So, the comedy or the tragedy or the breakdown of communication between people, it arises from devaluation of language. Now, um, look at the very first uh, direction, empty stage, Baker is a character, brick and brick here means here look at the uh, uh, meanings given in the square brackets. So, um, brick here, a football is thrown from off stage left to off stage right, Baker receiving ball, cube, cube is another word for thanks, not just another word, but the only word for thanks in dog's language. Abel off stage throws satchel to stage left, Abel enters, he is a schoolboy wearing grey flannel shorts, blazer, school cap, etcetera and carrying a satchel. He drops Seychel center stage and collects the other, which he places with his own. Abel exits stage right and is returns with microphone and stands, which he places down stage. The microphone has a switch. Abel into the microphone. Breakfast, breakfast, sun, dog, talk, testing, testing, one, two, three. So, how easily we understand something like one, two, three, testing, testing, it is a very ordinary act of testing. Uh, a mic, but breakfast, 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 sun, dog, trog. Some words do make sense, right? Breakfast. We know what is breakfast, but to them, breakfast is something else. Bre what does it mean? Testing, testing. Okay. So look at the way Stoppard uh, devalues the language. Okay, it's something, it, uh, the same word which is acceptable. Breakfast is a, an extremely acceptable word, but it may mean entire, uh, uh, an entire different thing to one group of people. 
okay, and it may not make any sense to another. So, what is breakfast, breakfast, testing, testing. He realizes the microphone is dead. He tries uh, the switch a couple of times and then speaks again into the microphone. Sun, dog, truck, pan, slack, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is dog's numerals, okay, sun, dog, trog, etc., etc., 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The microphone is still dead. Abel calls to someone off stage, had a priest, the mic is dead. Now, priest we understand, but he, in dog's language, priest means dead. Okay, the mic is dead. Pause. Baker enters from the same direction. He is also a schoolboy similarly dressed. A haddock priest. Haddock priest. Baker goes to the microphone, drops a satchel center on his way. Sun, rock, rock. The mic is dead. Baker swears. Bicycles. Now, bicycles is a cuss word here. Okay. It is like saying damn. Okay. Uh, and it means something very ordinary, something very. Uh, you, you know, something very routine stuff for people like us, but they understand. But also notice the way this kind of language is understood for a particular set of people. Both Abel and Baker are able to communicate using this entirely uh, different set of language. Now, what does it tell about language? What, uh, what does it say about language? It's arbitrary. Language is arbitrary. Okay, so, uh, completely arbitrary character of language. Okay, so, language is, uh, is what we make of it. Okay, so, by, uh, uh, an entirely and a completely uh, harmless word like bicycles can be used as a cuss word in some other community, okay, because they choose to use it that way. And what has Shakespeare got to do with it then? Why is dogs Hamlet? Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, slab. Now slab means okay. Shouting off stage indistinctly slab. Sun, dog, truck, slack, pan. The mic is live, able shouting to Baker with a thumbs up sign. Slab, slab is okay. Behind Abel, Charlie, another schoolboy enters backwards, hopping about the visible half of a ball throwing game. Charlie is wearing a dress, but schoolboy's shorts, shoes, and socks, and no wig. Brick, brick, here, here. A ball is thrown to him from the wings. Abel dispossesses Charlie of the ball. Cube, thanks. Brick, here. Charlie tries to get the ball, but Abel won't let him have it. Square, it means bastard. Now, square for us is something else, but to them is something else altogether. Abel throws the ball to the unseen person in the wings, not where Baker is. Daisy square, mean bastard. <laughs> Afternoons get stuffed. Okay, so look at these seemingly uh, innocuous words for us. Daisy square, uh, afternoons, and what do they mean? What do these words mean to these people? Vanilla square, <laughs> rotten bastard. Giving a V sign to Charlie. Afternoon. So, afternoons is uh, get stuffed. Abel hopping about calls for the ball from the wings. Brick here. The ball is thrown to Abel over Charlie's head. Dog. The headmaster is mortarboard and gown. In mortarboard and gown. Enters from the opposite wing. And as the ball is thrown to Abel, dog dispossesses Abel. So, uh, we see, meet dog for the first time. And who is dog? The headmaster. So, what, uh, the, all these boys, Charlie and Baker and Abel, they are school boys. Dog happens to be the uh, headmaster of this school. Cube, thank you. Pa, loud. Dog uh, gives Abel a clip over the ear and starts to mar march off carrying the ball. Respectfully to dog, cretinous git. Now, what is cretin and cretinous? Mentally retarded, stupid guy. Okay, but here. Cretinous is uh, uh, something very respect, res uh, a very respectable word. So, the boy uh, calls after his headmaster, Cretinous. Okay, that means, uh, thank you. Uh, what, oh, what time is it, sir? What time is it, sir? Git is another word for, is, is a word for sir. Turning around, hey? Cretinous pig faced git. Have you got the time, please, sir? So, ha look at, so respectful, respectful, okay? Cretinous pig faced git and 
uh, completely acceptable in their society. Dog takes a watch out of his waistcoat pocket and examines it. Trock poxy, half past three. Cube git, thank you sir. Upside article almost Le Lemington Spa. Have you seen the lorry from Lemington Spa? Maybe Lemington Spa is a company or a place and have you seen the lorry? Articles get lorry sir, Lemington Spa get Lemington Spa sir, upside have you seen it? Nid get no sir, Nid get no sir, okay. useless, useless is good day. Okay. And then you see when somebody who speaks uh, English the way we speak and then what happens when such a person comes into contact with these people who speak the dog language. Charlie, useless get good day sir. Dog exits with the ball baker enters, he looks at his wristwatch. Trog poxy half past three. There are now three satchels on the ground center stage. Baker goes to one and extracts a packet of sandwiches. Abel and Charlie do the same. The three boys settle down and start to examine the sandwiches. Abel looking in his sandwiches, pelican crash. So this is a variety. Cream cheese to Baker. Even ran, what have you got? Looking at his in his sandwich. Hollyhocks, ham. Even ran, what have you got? Mouse hole. So, mouse holes is egg. So, I got eggs. Undertake sun, pelican crash, frankly sun, mouse hole. Sop you one cream cheese for one egg? Slab. Okay. So, a very routine, very ordinary activity taking place in a very ordinary school among very ordinary school boys. Okay. But it is the language that sets them apart. Undertake sun, hollyhocks. Frankly, sun, pelican crash, hollyhocks, knit, square, afternoons. You know what is square, you know what is afternoons. Baker fans himself with his cap and makes a comment about the heat. Afternoons, few, cycle wrecks, hardly butter, fag ants, comment about heat. Fag ants, likely butter, consequential, very true. Very true means need salt. Now, very true is another uh, an extremely ordinary kind of exchange between us, uh, uh, you know, for us. But very true means need salt for them. Eh? Very true. Charlie takes a salt cellar out of his satchel. Charlie passes Abel the salt. Cube, thank you. He sprinkles salt on his sandwich and then offers salt to Baker. Very true. Cube, thank you. Baker uses the salt and puts it down next to him. Charlie puts his hand out towards Baker. Brick here. Baker passes Charlie his salt cellar. They eat the sandwiches. The explanation for the next passage of dialogue is that Abel and Baker, who are due shortly to participate in a school play performed in its original language, English, start rehearsing some of their lines. So now, th now that explains the uh, uh, inclusion of Hamlet in the title. Okay, they are going to. This is a school. They are going to uh, perform a play. Um, which in its original uh, language that is English. So, maybe you know English used to be the language of some barbarians and uh, they are going to play uh, you know this uh, uh, play in its original language that is English. Okay. So, they are rehearsing now. Now, suddenly you will find these people talking in ordinary normal English. Why are they doing it? They are rehearsing Hamlet. Okay. Now, however, uh, the uniqueness of uh, this particular section is that they are absolutely detached from this language. Shakespeare is supposedly uh, one of the best users of the English language, but these people remain unmoved. They are supposed to perform a play in some extinct language, English, and they go about it in extremely mechanical way. So, now look at the way. Who is there? Nay, answer me. Long live the king, get thee to bed. For this relief, much thanks. What? Has this thing appeared again tonight? Peace, break thee off. Look where it comes again. Looks it's not like the king. They are not acting these lines at all, merely uttering them tonelessly. Now, what does it tell you? This is not the way Shakespeare should be done, right? Okay. They are ab absolutely listless toneless and they are not acting at all because they are not interested in this language which is extremely bizarre and weird for them. Okay. But uh, what lines are these? 
Hamlet and the uh, you know the exposition part where the guards in the um, in the castle they cite Hamlet's father's ghost. Okay, so they are talking about it. By heaven, our Charles, they speak. It's here, pointing stage left. It's there, pointing stage right. Their arms crossing awkwardly. It's gone. But look, the russet mantle he has gone wrong. Uh, clad walks, Abel and Baker don't always structure their sentences correctly. Bicycles. Baker produces from his pocket his script. He looks through it and fi finds where he has gone wrong. The mon, the mon in russet mantle clad, walks over the dew of you of yon high eastern hill. Let us impart what we have seen tonight into indicating Hamlet is just above waist height with his hand, young Hamlet, slab, ok, block, next, knit, Charlie for no reason is singing to the tune of my way, you know the song, my way, now he is singing the song my way, he does not know all the words in the third line, Baker joins in on the fourth line in the close harmony and this is my way, uh, who is the singer, Frank Sinatra was uh, uh, my way and this is, these are the lines according to cha these uh, you know speakers of dog language engage congratulate moreover you can just imagine the tune state abysmal fairground bigot perambulate this aerodrome chocolate eclair found maureen again didum didada ultimately cried eggs dinosaurs rely indoors if satisfied egg now every word individually has a uh, has a meaning but together it's senseless Okay, for us, but for them it is, for them it, it means something, it means that this, they are singing, they actually believe they are singing Frank Sinatra's My Way and this is their way. Okay. Abel blows a raspberry by way of judgment as the song dies away, a lorry is heard arriving, the three boys get up and put away their sandwich papers etc and look expectantly in the direction of the lorry. Okay, the lorry comes. Baker goes forward looking out into the wings and starts directing the lorry which is apparently backing towards him with expressive gestures. Cauliflower, cauliflower, hardly, onyx, hardly, left, left, right, right hand down, tissue, tissue, slab, straight, straight, ok, ok, so they are giving direction in their language. The lorry driver, Easy, uh, his name is Easy, is heard slamming the cab door and he enters, he is dressed in a white boiler suit and cloth cap and is carrying a rolled up red carpet and a box of small flags on sticks. He puts them down. Uh, Buxton's uh, blocks and that, eh? Buxton's deliveries of Lamington Spa. I got a load of blocks and that, I will need a bit of a hand. Okay? Now, he is speaking in English the way it is normally understood and Easy happens to be the only person around who speaks English. Uh, or uh, this particular language. The boys look at him blankly, baffled. Now, what happens when a person who speaks a language like this uh, comes into contact with a dog speaker? I will need a bit of a hand, being as I am on my own, seeing as my maid got struck down in a thunderstorm on the A412 near Rick Mansworth, a bizarre accident, a bolt from the blue, zigzagged right on the onto the perforated snout of his Mickey Mouse gas mask. He was delivering five of them at the uh, bacteriological research children's party, entering into the spirit of it when jam, it was an electrifying moment, left his uh, nose looking more like a Donald Duck and his ears like uh, they popped out of a toaster. He sounded like a cuckoo clock striking twelve. Easy relate story with considerable gusto, but to his disappointment, it falls flat, being of course not understood. Right here then, lads, where do you want them? Another long pause. Baker takes a step towards Easy, pleased with himself for having a good uh, idea. Baker, by heaven, I charge thee speak. Okay, now what is this? This is this is a line from Hamlet. Okay, and Baker and other school kids, they have been memorizing line from Hamlet and uh, Easy's language is something, uh, you know, totally uh, unfamiliar to them and they think that, you know, perhaps he is also reciting lines from some Shakespearean play. 
So, by heaven I charge thee speak. Who are you then? William Shakespeare encouragingly he says. Critin is he? Critin, uh, as we understand Critin, is he a mentally retarded guy? A baker looking at his wristwatch, truck, taxi. You see, for Critin, uh, Critin for dog, then what time is it? Okay, so, it is 3.30, something like that. I thought so. <laughs> are you all a bit peculiar then? Where is the governor? Governor in Cockney language, uh, the head of the, you know, per, this, these affairs. Dog enters briskly. Useless. <laughs> afternoon. Useless git. Afternoon, sir. Afternoon is square. Now, this means in dog, get stuffed, you bastard. Dog grabs easy by the lapels in a threatening manner. How dare you insult me in front of my students that too. Marzipan clocks, watch it. Dog produces a piece of paper which is a plan of the construction which is to be made on the stage. So, see they are going to stage a, a performance of Hamlet and therefore easy has been called. He is a lorry driver and he has brought some bricks uh, and some construction material along and he is supposed to construct a stage for this play. So, now this is quite a large piece of paper and the steps and wall um, which are to be built are discernible on it. Dog examines the paper briefly and then starts positioning the boys. Abel, slab git. Yes, sir. Mm, pontoon crumble, slab git. Abel goes out towards the lorry. Baker, brick here. He positions Baker next to the wing near the lorry. Slab git. Cube, thank you. Charlie, slab git, brick. He positions Charlie in line with Baker and the lorry. Easy stands next uh, Charlie in the place where the steps are to be built. To Baker and Charlie, plank, ready. Plank it, ready sir. Plank, plank it. Dog gives the piece of paper to Easy who studies it warily. Easy puts the paper in his pocket. Plank. To Easy's surprise and relief, a plank is thrown to Baker who catches it, passes it to Charlie, who passes it to Easy, who places it on the stage. Dog smiles, looks encouragingly at Easy. Easy uncertainly calls plank. To his surprise and relief, a second plank is thrown in and passed to him uh, in the same way he places it. Plank. A third plank is thrown and positioned as before. Dog leaves satisfied. Easy is going to build a platform using planks, slabs, blocks and cubes so that the uh, platform is stepped with the steps upstage. Confidently. Plank. A block is thrown instead of a plank. When it reaches Easy, he passes it back to Charlie, who passes it back to Baker, who turns and places it on the floor upstage. While Baker is upstage, Easy has repeated his uh, call. Plank. A second block is thrown straight into Charlie's arms. Charlie passes it to Easy, who passes it back to Charlie, who takes it upstage to join the first block on the floor. Easy shouts, Plank. A plank is thrown straight to him and he places it gratefully on the floor next to the other three. Easy takes another look at the plans and replaces them into his pocket. He shouts, slab. Baker and Charlie have resumed their positions. A slab is thrown in, caught by Baker, passed to Charlie, passed to Easy and who places it on top of the planks? Easy shouts, slab. A second slab is thrown in and passed to Easy, who places it? A third slab likewise reaches Easy. He shouts, slab. Okay, what do you think is happening here? Now, look at the first, uh, uh, you know, when uh, uh, Stoppard introduces the play. In the introduction, page 141, plank, ready, slab, okay, block, next, cube, thank you. Okay, so, whenever easy means ready, a plank is thrown at him. Okay. In spite of not having a common language, they are still able to function. Okay. So, what is what is Stopper's question now? Why do we need language? In the beginning of this class, we were talking about the devaluation of language. So, why do we stress so much or why do we emphasize so much on language when just a few words? would do. Okay. And it is not act, uh, exactly necessary to have the same language when uh, communication is any way possible. Okay. So, it is not necessary to have and 
when uh, in plays like the dumb waiter we have seen that when the two characters speak the same language there is a communication breakdown between them nevertheless okay then what is so important about language that is the question so it's not the it's an absurd display of course it is uh, saying a lot of things but the basic question that uh, that uh, rises here that is uh, um, important here is that what is language okay and what is the importance of language in our society when without having a common language too we can communicate perfectly able smile uh, smile enters smiling slap knit knit git slap able leaves and a moment later another block comes flying across to easy who catches it throws it furiously at baker and charlie and catch it uh, who catch it and puts it down um, easy walks off into the wings from his satchel charlie produces a small transistor radio which he turns on he is lucky enough to catch his favorite song half way through the first verse which we have already heard that is my way uh, charlie sings easy useless now easy is quite <laughs> uh, frustrated with these people and useless um able politely off stage useless git okay what is useless afternoon and uh, almost like good afternoon okay so after good afternoon sir there is the sound of a slap and a sharp cry from <laughs> able easy reenters carrying a slab dog now reenters with a tray of button holes he puts this down and picks up the box of flags calling off stage able slab git break able enters holding his ear and glancing aggrievedly at easy dog starts handing out the flags starting with able who on receiving his flag goes back off stage dog hands flags to baker charlie and some of the audience counting the flags as he gives them out sun dog trog uh, slack pan sock slide bright none turn what duns okay these are you know 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and uh, um, this practice of handing uh, flags to audience as well this is all very brechtian we have seen this happening even in 6 degrees of separation where you have the actors you know where, where we we have one um, you know an extra carrying a dog painting and that uh, victorian ink silver ink well and all that okay so it's quite you know breaking the fourth wall so while the actors are getting the flags the audience are also getting uh, easy what mm, uh, dog takes this as a correction duns what duns what dog irritably does a recount 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and finds that he was right sun dog trog slack pan etc what duns so it must be 10 Oh, pa! Wow. Dog then turns his attention to the button holes. Easy expects to be given one. To easy knit, he gives a button hole to Charlie. Cube git, that is thanks sir. Block next. Baker comes forward and receives his button hole. Cube git, block Abel. Abel comes on and receives his button hole. Abel is holding his ear in an agreed manner, looking at uh, easy. Cube git. able retreat uh, retires back to the lorry dog looks expectantly at easy slab okay block slab block black slab he obviously expects easy to carry on with the work easy reexamines the plan replaces it in his pocket and nervously calls out to able block to his surprise and relief a block is thrown in by this time charlie who has guiltily turned off the radio um, as soon as dog entered has gone back to his receiving position as uh, has baker the block is sent uh, is passed down the line to easy who places it on top of the uh, slabs he calls out block okay so block is next for e uh, you know uh, block for uh, easy is block okay for these people it's next and uh, surprisingly he gets a block and therefore the work is resumed charlie critin is he critin is he and uh, uh, trog taxi marmalade marmalade denotes pleasure and approval great of git this is followed by another cry of pain from um, able charlie has turned his radio on again the radio emits the familiar pips of the time signal baker checks his watch jack mumble hardly out here are the football results charlie takes a pool 
um, coupon out of his satchel and starts checking it off. The rhythm of the language coming out of the radio is the familiar one, appropriate to home wins, away wins and draws. The following is a translation of the numbers, nil, quiet, uh, one, sun, two, dog, three, trog, four, slag, five, pen. In addition, clock and fog lamp correspond to city and united. Thus, the result had a clock quite, had a fog lamp trog uh, would be delivered with the inflections appropriate to say Manchester city nil, Manchester united three and away win. The radio starts by saying oblong sun with the inflection of division one. Oblong sun, dock trot quite, flange dock, car blank, dock, blanket clock quite, tube clock dock, handbag dock. Haddock, clock, quite, haddock, fog, fog lamp, trog, wonder, quite, picnicking pan. Charlie whistles at that, a five nil away win. Meanwhile, Easy re enters, carrying a tall load of blocks, followed by Abel, limping, carrying a similar load. Easy puts his blocks down, he notices the radio, and Charlie checking his pools. Easy produces a pools coupon and a pencil before he realizes. He can't make head or tail of the radio. Easy bemused. Mm, do you mind if I ask you something? What wavelength are you on? Now, this wavelength, may, you know, it could have pun. Okay. It could be the brand width of the transistor. Another meaning? Yeah, yeah, you know, the mental level. <laughs> what kind of people are you? So, again, when we were talking about stoppered and his use of puns. Okay. So, devaluation of language, use of puns, which is not as much uh, obvious here in Dog's Hamlet, but extremely uh, uh, popular in his, uh, um, in uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Okay. So, his use of the wavelength. So, meanwhile, Baker has started to make a neat wall out of the blocks and slabs, which have so far been assembled. It is apparent now that some of the blocks have gone apparently random letters printed on them. Easy, having put away his pool's coupons, adds blocks to the steps. Abel has dumped his loads of blocks near Baker and now limps off stage back to the lorry. Dog enters. Moronic creep. This means maroon, maroon carpet. Easy grabs dog by the lay pillow. I mean, how dare you call me this? Watch it. Dog surprised disengages himself. Afternoons, um, moronic creep. Brigitte, here, sir. Dog, ah, cube, thank you. <laughs> Baker points at the carpet. Dog unrolls the red carpet to make a path from the microphone to the wings. What is happening here? So, they are not only constructing a stage, makeshift stage for practice or for staging Hamlet. They are also doing all the right, you know, uh, kinds of things which are done at such school plays, rolling out red carpets, giving around flowers and buttonholes to people. So, the works. Charlie has turned off the radio on dog's entrance and now Baker rejoins him in building the wall. Easy has completed that stage of the steps and the wall is complete. Baker and Charlie are nowhere to be seen because they build the wall from the back and it now conceals them. This leaves Easy apparently alone in front of the wall. He hasn't yet noticed the letters which read Maths Old Egg. Easy takes the plan out of his pocket and studies it again. Dog notices the wall. He looks at Easy. Easy looks at the wall. Easy looks at Dog. Easy smiles. Dog slaps Easy lightly on the cheek. Easy opens his mouth to protest. Dog cuffs him heavily on the other cheek and knocks Easy through the wall, which disintegrates. Dog takes the piece of paper out of Easy's pocket and looks at it carefully. Easy picks himself up. Charlie and Baker go back in into their receiving positions. Dog gives the paper back to Easy. Okay, would you like to comment on the stage directions here? Anything peculiar, which strikes you as something very peculiar here? Firstly, look at uh, uh, the sheer absence of uh, uh, a pronoun. Okay, easy does that, easy do, does that, Charlie does that, dog uh, hits him, dog calls him, dogs look, looks at him. Okay, you have no pronoun. So, uh, definitely Stoppard is telling us that this is not your usual.
play, it is not your usual language. Okay. So, uh, again you know as we see that the play is all about how language is used in various contexts. Okay. So, this is also you know why use pronoun at all, this is perhaps this is what Stoppard is hinting at. Here, what is your game? Cube, thank you, uh, cube. Then he calls out to Abel, cube, Abel, a cube is thrown into a baker, um, uh, passed to Charlie, passed to Easy, who puts it in place, dog to Charlie and baker, slab, cube, slab, cube git with venom git. Dog is pleased and smiles, Easy is completely at a loss, dog leaves satisfied, cube, another cube falls, uh, fall, uh, follows the same route, cube. A slab sails on and Baker and Charlie catch it together. They immediately take it up stage and place it down to form the base of a rebuilt wall. They start rebuilding the wall. Meanwhile, Easy walks off towards Abel and as soon as he is off stage, there is the sound of a thumb and a cry from Abel. Abel walks on limping, holding his ear and rubbing his backside. Easy, uh, off stage, cube. A cube sails on over Abel's head, and Abel, who is caught by surprise, catches it and places it on the steps. This keeps happening again and again while Baker and Charlie rebuild the wall. Abel, however, makes a tower out of the cubes instead of laying them to make a new level. After seven cubes in total, Easy enters and sees the tow tottering tower of cubes and just saves them from collapsing. Baker and Charlie, Charlie, meanwhile, have removed themselves from re view by rebuilding the wall, which now says Meg Short Gled. So, earlier it was Mass Old Egg, now it is Meg Short Gled. Do you think there is some kind of an anagram happening here? Okay. So, things that can be done with any language. Okay. So, in, you know, I'm a infinite possibilities of things, you know, of, of any language. Also, the fact that language can be the sole reason for aggression and violence. Okay, so, uh, many a time we find that easy gets slapped around, then able gets slapped around, then dog is uh, held threat threateningly by easy by his lapels. All this because of uh, lack of a common language. However, at the same time, Stoppard also tells us that uh, familiarity with the bare basic minimum words is also possible and that can also help in communication. Okay? So, then the completely unstable nature of language that is being um, hinted at. Dog enters carrying a small table with silver trophies covered with a velvet cloth. So, another staple feature of any um, you know, call school function. He walks to the microphone and stresses, son, dog, trog, one, two, three. The microphone is dead. Dog to baker. Had a priest, that means the microphone is dead. Had a git, priest. Baker goes to the microphone and turns the switch on. Son, dog, trog, uh, gym shoes, excellent. So, gym shoes means excellent. Uh, the microphone is live. Meanwhile, Easy has placed all the cubes correctly so that they may a top layer to the steps. He is one cube short, however, Abel goes to the lorry. Cube short, brick, cube short, uh, brick, cube. <laughs> a cube sails in from the lorry and uh, easy catches it and then the steps are complete. Dog turns to go, sees the new wall with its message and looks at easy. Easy looks at the wall, he looks at dog. Pa, pa means loud. Dog knocks him through the wall which disintegrates. Dog leaves. Charlie and Baker start reassembling the components of the wall. Easy shouts after dog. Yob flowers. Charlie, Baker and Easy are roughly in line by the carpet. Dog reappears immediately with a bouquet which is wrapped in cellophane and tied with a red ribbon. It is important that it is, uh, uh, it is distinctive because it appears in the second half of the play. He hands this to Charlie. March music is heard. Charlie gives the bouquet to Baker, who gives it to Easy, who thrusts it into dog's hands as he exits. Dog re-enters furiously and gives flowers back to Easy, who gives them to Abel as he enters. Abel gives them to Charlie, who loses them while rebuilding the wall. Easy exits and returns with lid for platform. Charlie and Baker, now joined by Abel, rebuild the wall. 
then take their little flags out of their pockets and start waving them. Easy joins in unhappily. A lady enters followed by a smirking dog. The music plays, the flag, flags wave, the lady gets to the microphone, the music stops and she is ready to give her speech which is written on a neat postcard held in her gloved hands. A lady nicely scaps, slops, yops, yits, speaks, swaps. As one might say, you are grace, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Okay, this is what uh, the speech means. Sad facts, brats, pule, puke, crap, pot, stink, spit, grow up, dunces, crooks, rank, socks, dank, snot rags, conquers, ticks, brick, uh, crib, books, cocks, nooks, blog, bogs, jack off, catch pox, pick spots, uh, pick spots, scaps, padlocks, Seize, kicks, king, slack, nick, swag, swig, coke, bank, kickbacks, frankly, can't stick kids, men's, sana, incorpore, sano, applause, lady comes down from the platform, held by dogs. So, obviously, it was a very graceful speech and it is received with the uh, required applause. Okay. They stand by the table, dog lifts the cloth to reveal the school trophies. Dog presenting the school prizes reads, Pan sticks, Jemmy, Sun up, Fox major. Fox enters from auditorium left, climbs steps to stage and collects his fry, prize. He shakes hands with a beaming lady. Fox, cube get. Thank you, madam. Fox exits into auditorium right. As Grimsby, primate, Watt, Sun up, Fox major. Fox is still near the front of the auditorium turns and awkwardly squeezes in between two rooms of seats. As he steps over the audience's legs, he apologetically exclaims, cutlery, that is excuse me, reaches stage and receives prize as before. So, he is a favorite, I think, or one of the top uh, pupils of this school and he is getting, uh, uh, you know, prizes uh, repeatedly. Cuff laces, empty cross. Crazy dogs, poodle fire, melon legs, uh, arc lamps, pelvic wiggle, stamp, grinning, grape, suit, pergolas, fairly pricks, double, elegant, frantically, plugs, fox major. Dog has been placing all these, you know, so fox major, fox gets the prize again. Fox has been placing all these trophies on top of the velvet which covered them earlier and which he has placed on the platform easy build. Fox swoops up when he hears his name and rushes onto the stage as before, but picks up the table which, it, uh, which is now quite uh, bare and exits triumphantly stage left. Throughout this presentation, Abel, Baker and Charlie have been waving their flags each time Fox arrives on stage, but their faces reveal their dissatisfaction and boredom. Practically, helmet, bed socks, Denmark and now helmet, prince of Denmark, Mrs. Doc correcting him, Hamlet, it's okay, it's not helmet, but because see the language is new to them, well, it's not their fault, so helmet and Hamlet interchangeable. Hamlet, uh, uh, bed socks, uh, Denmark, A.T. William Shakespeare, you know, by William Shakespeare as I understand, yob, 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 flowers, she looks to schoolboys who know nothing of their whereabouts. Mrs. Dog turns away and gives Lady her buttonhole with a little courtesy to Lady. Hernia, separating kidneys, freaks, cat boils, frankly, uh, gangrenous, armpit, dripping, maggots. Lady with energy and charm sought the pudding club. Music, Dog, Mrs. Dog and Lady begin to exit past the wall. The lady notices the message on the wall which says, God slag them. So, again, she is uh, taken aback but bravely continues out. Dog looks daggers at easy. As soon as the lady and Mrs. Dog have left the stage, dog does an about turn and marches back to easy. Easy looks at dog. Dog looks at the wall. Easy dutifully hurls himself through the wall which disintegrates. Dog leaves. Easy picks himself up. He shouts furiously after dog, sting back, poxy, crank. Abel, Baker and Charlie are also resentful about dog and all their succeeding lines, as are easies, are insults, referring to dog, though not necessarily called out after him. Packs, quinces, carpax, scanting, ponzi, creep, daisy square, sadist, fascist, fishes, afternoon, 
officious bastard, lunatic, avocados, castle, sofa, dog, have his guts for garter, see if I do not, avocados, castle, cigar, smoke, right, see if I do not, kick his backside, queen says ice packs, right, daisy square, slap git, knit git, three bags full git, crazy little squirt, daisy vanilla, Square, Queen's bog, have his puff, a cow pox, so help me dog, see, um, avocado, slab, moronic creep, slab, cretinous pig face, cretinous pig face, uh, 410, <laughs> what, dunce, cube, ok. <laughs> now, what do you think is going on here, they are both all angry with Mr. Dog, who uh, runs the place, ok, they are using their best or worst language to abuse him. Okay, and they are doing a very good job of it, <laughs> okay, although they do not understand each other at all, okay, but then they are using the language the way they, <laughs> they understand, what does cube, okay. Um, page 163, easy, Hamlet, Bed Socks, Denmark, Yeti, William, Shakespeare, the wall says dogs, Hamlet, okay. Now, why dogs in Hamlet, why not Shakespeare's Hamlet? even the title of the play, Dog's Hamlet. Hamlet as we all know is by William Shakespeare, but Enters now dressed to take his part in the 15 minute Hamlet. Now, what is 15 minute Hamlet? Hamlet actually runs for 3 to 4 hours or at least 2 and a half hours. But what is this 15 minute Hamlet? An abridged version, a school version, uh, you know, uh, something that we have it in any common school, is not it very common, very ordinary, very trite to have um, abridged versions of Shakespeare uh, everywhere. So, this is what 15 minutes of Hamlet mm -hmm. and uh, I am very sure that they must have abridged and shortened and cut it out the way they want to. Okay. So, if this is 15 minutes of Hamlet, he goes to the platform from which he speaks the prologue of the Hamlet and then exits. This leaves the wall and the steps to be used as the walls and ramparts of Elsinore. Elsinore is that castle of uh, Denmark castle in which the action takes place. Uh, at the back of the stage, left and right are two folding screens. The stage left screen has a ball through the top, which allows a cut out sun, moon and crown to be swung into vision from behind the screen. Mm. Prologue. Okay. Enter Shakespeare, bows. Now, you also have one Shakespeare coming here. Shakespeare, for this relief, much thanks. Though I am native here and to the manor born, it is a custom more honored in the breach than in the observance. Well, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. There is a divinity that shapes our ends. Rough hue them how we will. Though this be madness, yet there is method in it. I must be cruel only to be kind, hold as it were the mirror up to nature, a countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Lady in our audience shouts, marmalade, that is marvellous. <laughs> the lady doth protest too much, cat will mew and dog will have his day, bows and exits, end of prologue. What do you understand by this? Are you familiar with these lines? Okay, see this particular prologue is a collage of all the soliloquies from Hamlet. Okay. So, to be or not to be, there is method in his this madness, this, these are Polonius's lines, to be or not to be famous soliloquy, my Hamlet, okay. something is rotten in the state of Denmark, another famous speech, 
Okay. Mm, it is a custom more honored in the breach than in the observance, uh, than in the observance. Uh, though I am native here and to the manor born. Um, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Hamlet tells this to, um, uh, says these lines to Horatio, his friend. Okay. So, this is a mixed mixture or a pastiche of all the memorable lines, you know, uh, which are so dear to the Shakespearean purists. And uh, how are they used here? Cut abridged because this is a 15 minute Hamlet, you see. Okay. So, this is, and so now what is, what is the question that uh, uh, Stoppard is asking here? See, Shakespeare can be reduced to absolutely, you know, and if it is reduced to the basics, then how absurd it sounds. Okay. And then what happens to all these ideas or all the, uh, that talk about uh, you know the beauty of Shakespearean language of the Shakespearean plays and you know the language as the best feature of all Shakespearean plays. Okay, if this can be done, and he's using everything from Shakespeare, but put together and little bit of mixing and matching, and how uh, ridiculous it sounds. That's what he's talking about. Okay, so. Many people uh, say that uh, Stoppard borrows heavily from Shakespeare. It's not so. Okay, he uh, does not necessarily borrow. Okay, but he you, you uses uh, bits and parts and makes a nice collage and a pastiche of everything. Okay, and then comes up with something which is very uh, unique, very Stoppard. That's the idea. We'll continue with it uh, tomorrow. Thank you.